His feet were bare and his hair looked like somebody had cut it with a bowl. Uh, what have you made that into? <laughs> Welcome to episode 30 of, of Ghost Hunts. Hunts. Three zero, the big three zero. Ghost Hunts is nearly as old as that now. That's 30 works, years old. Can you believe it? We've been doing this for 30 <laughs> years. One 30 episode years. a year. 30 weeks, though. That's fucking ages. That is a long time. Um, what did you do for your 30th birthday? Oh, I had a pretty epic 30th birthday. 30th birthday. <laughs> um, a friend of mine called Chris, Chris Dunkley, very, very nice man. Um, Chris he, Dunkel? Chris Dunkley. Dunkley. I don't know if you met Chris. He um, he basically organised the whole thing. He rented out a restaurant for me. Aww. And then he organised a treasure, a, was it a treasure hunt? Treasure hunt all around London. Oh my so God, that's so and got nice. And, and then he arranged for us to go karaoke and bowling at the end of it. Oh, my God. When he planned the whole thing, it was really nice. I hate planning anything. Wow. Um, yeah. What a good awesome. mate. Yeah. Well done, Chris, if you're listening. Yeah, he was great. He won't be listening. He won't be listening. Um, Fine. But, uh, every, uh, yeah. He, uh, what did you do? Um, I went to I went for some drinks at the Ned, which is really not on brand for me. But no. I just I got a bit obsessed with it for about a month because I was like, oh my god, they do amazing potatoes, right. and um, it was too expensive for all my friends. So we went there for a bit, and then I went um, to Weatherspoons. Uh, no, I went pole dancing in Freedom Bar. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Ally, Did you enjoy Ally it? to the Freedom Bar. Um, I fucking loved it. Did you? Yeah. Have you done it again since? I haven't actually. Why? But um. Well, I don't know. I always feel like, you know, places like, like gay bars like Freedom Bar, I'm like, I, I just leave them to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to go there. Straight you could go women pole dancing are, anywhere. Oh, you, you could go. I know, but I love a gay bar. Was it a... Oh, so it wasn't a... Um, was you know it a Freedom class? Bar. I've never been. Oh, no, it wasn't a class. You know Freedom Bar? Oh, you know, you just said you've never been. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I felt like I was in a fucking <laughs> parallel universe then. <laughs> we have been doing this for 30 years, so... Um, it should be second nature by now. No, in the basement, it's got a, a pole. Oh, I see. And I just leapt right on. Right, so there was no class, there was no... No, no, no. And no. I mean that in both senses. I was just trash. I mean, there's no class and... for you to take part yeah. like you have no class. <laughs> yeah. Zero class. Excellent. Not a classy lady. Uh, but it was really fun. And uh, I just love a gay bar, Hannah. Well, maybe we should go and pole dance at Freedom today on we the podcast. <laughs> Just at lunchtime, yeah. 30 weeks. I didn't know we'd last this long, to be honest. We've come so far. We've come so far. How have you been? I've been all right, actually. It's just been it's been really hot, yeah. so I'm struggling to sleep. Yeah. Um, I really need to buy a fan. Have you got... Uh, yeah, do you know what? This... Because I only got back to London last night after being up north, and... I think I've fallen in love with Adam all over again um, because he brought the fan in and I was like, I was so... Because I don't... It's not It's not the heat, it's that it feels really close to me and I think it's invading my personal space. Yeah, yeah. And I don't like it. It's not the fact that my body's actually hot. I just... I hate the weather being so close to my head. Yeah, it's That's what I don't gross. like. I get annoyed and I'm like... It, get, it makes me really mad. Yeah. So he just he was just like, I don't need it. Here you are. And put the fan... Like right next to me in bed. Oh, that's And he nice. didn't have any of Susie sat sweating next to me, and I just had a lovely night's sleep. But surely it's better for both of you that you both have the fan. Well, there's nowhere to put it where it can get both of us. Oh, I see. And he, he was like, "Shall we put it on the floor and aim it up?" And then, I, but the, the front of it's fallen off. Oh, so if Rosie God. walks into it, it's going to be like she's going to be like cubed, ready for a stew by the morning. Uh, you know cubed, what I mean? ready. For... So I got my nail caught in it actually. So really? Is like, it quite? Um, it's quite. Is it like a Dyson or something? How posh are we talking? No, it's not that. But it's. It's. I imagine it would hurt if you got your finger caught in it. Oh, uh, see, the one I'm going to get is probably from Argos. That even I if think you, that could you couldn't be it. even blend your fingers if you tried. Oh, that's fine. You know. So it's not going to work. Well, I think invest in a good fan. Invest, spend money on a fan, babe. Like seventy quid? Are you talking? Oh, just do it. It's gonna, it's gonna last you years. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, you're right. And they are gonna be the ones that are left. Everywhere else will be sold out, mate. 
Yeah, and this heat wave is going to stay. Almost having the window open is worse. Oh, it's the worst. And also where I live, you it's can hear worst. all the, like, the feral, like... Maybe the oil. Like, oh, there's so yeah. much shit on our street. Yeah, but people go mental. People go mental. Like, I actually... Um, so the people who do crack down our street, um, they used to do it down an alley, but now they've, they've started doing it on the street. Oh, my God, they're so, getting brave. Yeah, they're getting really brave. They're, and, you know, the sun's out. They, like, take a bit of crack in the street, and they... Honestly, I just see them putting their heads in a bag, and then they'll just come Is up Is that how air. you do crack? Um, well, I, don't, I try not to... Is that to, not glue? It might be glue. I haven't asked. As I walk past, I sort of look at my peripheral vision. I don't, you know, I think it's rude to stare at a crackhead, isn't it? And, um, and they're, if they're doing it out on the streets, though, I think they're kind of looking for the attention. Maybe. I do like a little... I do a wide berth of them. There's like two or three of them that I recognise, but they've really got um, quite brazen with their, with their yeah, habits. Yeah, coming out onto the street with your crack. <laughs> yeah. It's quite, it's quite a lot, but it's tooting. So I'm like, hey, oh, shit. anything goes in the tooting. Absolutely, you know I mean? absolutely. Um, before we start, I'd like to say thank you to all of our patreons. Oh my god, you guys are the fucking best. Everyone has been amazing. In fact, we've had so many that I think, unfortunately, under this episode, we can't do the shout outs anymore on Patreon. But what we will do is we'll send you a little message on Patreon. Yeah, we want to thank, thank you. you. We're going to thank you personally yeah, rather we than are. doing it exactly. for five minutes because at the end. Because it's just going to take ages and no one's going to listen to it, I guess. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Please carry on supporting us. And enjoy the episode. Enjoy. Thank you, guys. I did a gig last night. Uh, hashtag gig. <laughs> that was weird. Okay. Uh, went to do a gig last night. Uh, one we both know of. Very good. Ra- packed out room on a Monday hot night. And a hot Monday hot night. Hot Monday mo- hot Monday. Hot Monday. Hot Monday. Hot Monday mo- mic. It's a hot day Monday. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I saw Clinton Baptiste at the end. He no way. Lines. Yeah. I was the... Um, He's the one who does the, like, jokey psychic stuff. Yeah, I warmed him up for him last night, so that was good. But he You was warmed great. him up for him? Oh, fuck's sake. <sighs> I'm just, I'm just, just, <laughs> oh, my God, what's happening? Not into the mic! Oh, what are you gone. doing? No, it's not gone. Has it gone? No, it's not. You literally aimed your mouth at the mic there. If you'd sneezed into it, I'd have walked out. <laughs> um, I think it would have cost me a lot to replace that mic. That? So... You're playing with slime. I'm fa- uh, so. Oh yeah. So I bought you some slime. She's bought me some slime. Is that because you have a young nephew? So this is the. No, sort of... I like. I'd like to say that it is. It's got nothing to do with the fact that you have a, a youngin in your life. Oh my god, he's too young for it. Oh, she's disappeared under the studio podcast I'm table. Sorry, I'm sorry, what I'm sorry, are I'm you sorry. doing? Okay. Um. No, he um. He's too young for it. He kept trying to use it. I was like, get off. Okay. Um, I bought it because I don't know about you, but when I'm trying to get the creative juices, just <laughs> uh, can someone okay. else join me and do the podcast? <laughs> Anyone, Mike? <laughs> what shit? That's so hot. What? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm just about to fall apart. <laughs> I feel like I'm seeing you on the edge. Has something <laughs> happened? <laughs> Is this you on a good night's sleep? <laughs> yeah, I've had a really good night's sleep and this is mad. <laughs> Take me back to two or three hours, baby. Um... I feel like you've got like hay fever or something. No. Because you're doing this a lot. Am I? I don't you're know what that's about. You're going, your juices. I think it's just me trying to do my best Jennifer Coolidge impression. That's what... Do you think, my brother says that I remind me a bit of Jennifer Coolidge. What do you think? Mm, no. Yeah, I can sort of. These gays are trying to kill me. <laughs> That's good, actually. Yeah, thank that you. That is really thank you. good. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, I, love I don't know if... It, I, see, when he said it, I was like, I don't know if it's a compliment or an insult. I don't know. Oh, she's a fucking queen. She's an icon, of course. She's an icon. She plays the, 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 the strangest roles, doesn't she? I like, think she's got the perfect career. It's just a shame that it's oh, all kicking off for her. She's amazing. Like, now. Not a shame. Like, it's just that she should have been seen for so many things. Yeah, she never was because of her titties. Oh, she's fucking awesome. I love her. I loved it. These guys are trying to kill me. Anyway, to kill what was I going to say? Okay, so I don't know about you, but slime. Uh, my nephew keeps kept trying to run away with it, and I was like, get off, little bastards. Yeah. Um, but I don't know about you, but during my creative process, I kind of, I can't stare at the laptop or the notepad or whatever. I have to. Like, yeah. So playing with this kind of while I think about jokes is really helpful really mm. I have to when I'm writing um, 
comedy, I have to I have to walk around. I can't be sat down. Oh, really? I yeah. can sit down. No, I get a bit. I have to mumble under my breath. Well, maybe. Go on, give me some slang. Well, no, I've I've given you one. Oh. So I've gifted Susie a that slime. That is the exact colour of labia. What? Look at that. That is a, that is a like a vaginal peach. Yeah. Isn't it? I don't know. I it's a bit, really it's a bit it grim. Mine. I don't really want to play with it. I don't really want it. No, I do. Thank I'll you for No, I'll have it back. I'll have it back. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I love it. Oh, fuck. I love it. Oh, asthma. Oh, uh, it's the colour of it, Hannah. Why have you got the cool lime green one? Do you want the lime <clears> green? <throat> yeah. You can... Oh, fuck. It's like sweating. Hang on. Well, it will be because it's really fucking hot. There you go. Okay, I've got the green one now. I don't I don't know whether this is good podcasting. Maybe we should crack on it's with it. It's not very good podcasting. But do you slime. like your slime? I really like the slime. Yeah, thank see you. See how you get on? All right. Do it throughout and see what happens. Okay. Shall we pick a tarot? I oh. believe it's your turn. It's my turn, isn't it? Okay. Take your slime with you. Come on. Okay. I like your necklace. Oh, thank you. I'd like one of those. Oh, that's off. Can I have it? No. <laughs> um... <coughs> No, it has to. It has to. You can't just. You can't pick one. No, did that call to yeah, you? It did. In what it way? Is. It just. Mm. It was peeping out at me. Okay. <gasps> what the fuck is it? Oh no. Is it the tower? Oh no. <laughs> it's the devil. I picked the devil. What the fuck? <laughs> I just knew. Is that, that arguably worse than the tower? Um. No, the tower's the worst one, isn't it? Oh, Jesus I'm being a bit devilish Christ. today. Okay, I'll put that. I'm being a bit devilish today. Are you being devilish? Yeah. Why? I can be. <laughs> if it means that our lives are going to be okay. Oh, my God. Okay, here we go. The devil Those signifies... Those people are chained to get naked people chained up together. It signifies temptation, addiction and lust. <gasps> oh, all my three favourite things. The card shows the horned goat of Mendes holding oh. a torch down towards the earth. Sexy. He also holds two naked humanoid figures seemingly yeah. captive. Yeah. See, yeah, they're not captive. They're like, mm -hmm, consensual captive. Yeah, consensual. Am I right? Chain me up. However, the chains holding them appear loose and they have grown horns and tails, becoming more like the devil. The devil shows us that once somebody succumbs to initial temptation, it becomes more difficult over time to free himself. Seeing the devil encourages acknowledgement of an issue before it becomes too difficult to solve. Right. Interesting. So what does that mean? That, that I love temptation. I love lust. I love all yeah, the Yeah, all of those things are great. I guess it's like... It's not a bad thing at all then, is you, it? It's about nipping something in the bud, isn't it? Hmm, what could that be? I don't know. In, like, poddy terms, I'm like... Oh. Do I need to, like, watch out if I'm getting haunted? And, like, watch, Maybe watch my back? Maybe it's some really shit company offers us loads of money to be sponsors, but we hate them. Oh, yeah, true. You know, like GB News or something. Yeah, we can't sell out the GB News. I'm not doing that. But you know what I mean? If they offered me a million... Oh, uh, what have you made that into? <laughs> Hannah's you... just made a little willy. It's not a willy. See, you devilish. You, why do you assume that's a willy? It's a sausage. That's gross. It's a German sausage. The white sausage. The German white sausage. Oh, it's delicious. Like have you ever it. had white sausage? No. Oh, fuck. It's amazing. <laughs> fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, maybe, because I've got a meeting at four, maybe the temptation is... Or was having a wine at lunch. Oh, and maybe we just don't. No, we have to. It's hot out. <laughs> right. Well, we really did well with our temptation. <laughs> You're like, no, we're going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it says about the pod, isn't it? So mm, we'll have to keep an eye on that. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Thank you, Dylan. Okay, thank you, Tara. So, um, Hannah, would you like a story? Yes, please. I'd love a story. Well, I've got one for you. Oh, so. is it going to be scary? It's dead scary. <laughs> Hide and seek at the Martin House. Oh. They call it the Martin House, and it's easily the most haunted place in town. During the day, it's a beautiful two-storey estate in the Millville area. It sits behind a high gate looking over the bay on 10 acres, which comes at a high price given land costs inside Panama City. The current owner keeps up the grounds and maintains the home, but they say he will not live in the house or be there after dark. He rents it out for parties and events, lets people picnic on the grounds and opens it during the day for tours and historical outings. 
but an hour before sunset, the gates are locked and the place is cleared of people. It's a beautiful place, but they say that the devil walks there after <gasps> dark. Oh no. That's fucking weird, isn't it? Oh no. Oh no. I'm driving by the devil. Oh, we knew it'd be fucking you. Oh fuck. And you've got red on today. I oh, know. And your hair looks a little bit like horns. Oh fucking hell. The local legend says that Mr. Martin suspected that his wife was having an illicit affair with a servant. They say that in a fit of jealousy, he made her watch as he hung him, later hanging his wife, his kids and himself from the same large tree in their front yard. They say you can hear voices, screams and all kinds of odd noises there after dark. They say that people have seen figures in the windows and on the grounds near sunset with black eyes and pale faces. They say that you can see lights come on and off in the house after dark and it's best avoided once the sun goes down. They say a lot of things, but as a writer of dark fiction, I don't put a lot of stock in local legend. I don't believe in Billy Bowlegs. I don't believe in kissing Mary. Poor What's Mary, that? I don't know. Okay. Billy Bowleg. I don't know what Billy Bowleg. Okay. I'm going to have to Google all that. <laughs> yeah, and I don't believe in the hitchhikers. They say can be picked up by the West Bay Bridge. The Martin House, however, is something I do believe in because when I was young, I experienced it firsthand. It was 1993 or 94 when it happened, and I was about seven or eight. My mother had worked at the same hospital for years, and that hospital had chosen to do their employee appreciation picnic on the grounds of the Martin House. I have to believe that they were aware of the dark history of the place, but as I said, nothing had ever happened during the day, so they weren't worried. The yard was huge, and the human resource... Department. Yeah, it says that next. I just said it weird, human resource. Oh, I was joking. Yeah, it does, yeah. HR. The yard was huge, and the HR department set up games and tents, and all kinds of things to entertain the kids while their parents socialized. I felt I. That's exactly when people will have switched off the pod. So if you're still with us, thank you. Uh, uh, maybe these little moments are us getting possessed. Well, yeah, the devil's fucking looking out at us. I can't believe a penis. The about. devil and a penis and a vagine. Fucking hell. Google the devil card if you're listening because it is a bit mental. I fell in with a couple Sexy. of kids that I knew. Okay, I didn't mean to say that over yeah. the kids. Wow. That was weird. Sexy kids. Sexy. I fell in with a couple of sexy kids. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in with a couple of the kids that I knew. I fell in with a couple of the kids that I knew. <laughs> Cooking it on my head. <laughs> And we played some games and explored the booths, but ultimately got a little bored with the schedule event. These were kids that I didn't know well, but we all knew each other in that way that you know someone after spending years upon years going to these sort of schedule events with them. One of them was the son of my mum's friend. Another one was a kid... Sorry. What are you doing? I'm messing with my slime while I'm listening to you. Oh, my God. Um, one of them was my... <laughs> Fuck's sake... One of them was the son of my mum's friend. Another one was a kid I actually went to school with but didn't really pal around with outside of things like this. Another one was just a kid who would wander up and fall back in with us when we were all together. There were about seven of us that day and I can't remember who suggested that we should play hide and seek. It was unanimously agreed upon but after playing out on the lawn for a few rounds, it became a little boring. When someone suggested that we could play in the house, that sounded like a much better idea. So we went inside, but quickly discovered the problem was playing indoors. The house was kind of a museum, and adults don't usually like it when kids are running around things that could get broken. We tried for a couple of rounds, but after being yelled out by a lady in a dress... Yelled we... out? Yelled at, probably. Yelled at by a lady in a dress. <laughs> it says you're out, but oh, right, maybe okay. that's an American term. Uh, oh, no, they... I don't have an answer, so I don't know why. I, I think yelled out, as in yelled out of the house. <clears throat> oh, right. But well, after... they do say cuss out, don't they? Yeah. Like, I cussed him out. But to actually, she actually removed them. She's like, the biggest she question is, outside. are we ever going to get through an episode without doing a shit American impression? Unlikely. Okay. Um, after being yelled out by a lady in a dress, we thought we might have to go back outside. That was when... 
we saw the kid on the stairs. As I said, none of us really knew each other, but none of us had ever seen this kid. He was youngish, probably about five or six, and he didn't really say anything. He just stared at us through the slats on the staircase. And I'll remember the way he looked at us for my entire life. He seemed both fascinated by our appearance and utterly terrified at our game. He looked the way I looked at the dog sometimes when he was making noise while my dad was trying to nap. He looks like he thought we might wake up a parent that would be angry. Someone suggested that maybe we could go play upstairs and we all thought that might be a good idea. The upstairs was usually blocked off, but if that kid was up there, then the door must be unlocked. Uh, I mean... Oh Jesus. my god, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Oh my god, I'm such a dickhead. <laughs> um, I mean, I was going to say... If something is... If something is locked up... <laughs> if something... <laughs> Yeah. It's like, what is the word? What is the word? You've lost your mind. I honestly feel like I have. Yeah. Everything feels a bit fuzzy. I feel like I've been doing crack down on the streets with your mates. <laughs> I feel, honestly, something weird. You've happening. put your head in a bag of glue. Something weird's happening. I don't know what it is. I don't Devil's know whether it's that fruit granola that I had this morning because I'm used to toast. I don't know. <laughs> but whatever it is, it's sending me up the fucking wall. Um, if something is like, ah, if you're not allowed to go somewhere. Yeah. Don't do it. There's a fucking reason for it. Don't do it. Yeah, but it's, you know, they're kids. They're like eight or nine. Doesn't matter. Yeah, but don't you think the most intriguing thing as a child is to do the thing you're not supposed to do? Oh, yeah, it still is to me now. I'm 33. Yeah, exactly. So take your own advice. Yeah, I should. You, no one can. Um, none of us ever went upstairs. It was locked, but we found the door was open. Mm. So we all went up. The upstairs was about the same size as the downstairs, but we saw a ladder going up into the attic and thought that would make the best place for hide-and-seek. Curiouser and curiouser. It would be dark out there, probably with stuff to hide behind, and it would be spooky. What we found was a pretty big attic with boxes and furniture covered in sheets. I thought you were going to say, uh, what we found was a pretty big ass. <laughs> <laughs> what we found was a pretty big ass. <laughs> we found a pretty big ass up there in the attic. We found a big asshole up big there. Big ass. <laughs> what is happening? Well, if you were to fall through the asshole into the abyss, that would be very on brand for the devil, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's probably how you went to hell through that, the devil's asshole. I think that's asshole. what they say, actually. Oh, really? In church. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to church. Go through an asshole, go to hell. Uh, yeah. Because they're all the a hell. bunch of cunts, churchgoers. Okay. Sorry. No, you're not. Oh, Didn't that mean to slime that. is minging. Don't you like it? Mm, it's making my hand feel a bit sweaty. Yeah, it's because you're sweaty. Mine's fine because I'm not sweaty. Okay. Move it on. What we found was a pretty big attic with boxes and furniture covered in sheets. It was dusty and cobwebby and right... Did you just rib it like a frog? What was that? What? Uh... Did you just rib it like a frog? No, I didn't. And what we found was... Rabbit. It was dusty and cobwebby and reminded me of the opening of one of my favourite shows, Are You Afraid of the Dark? <gasps> I love that show. I want to rewatch it so much. Oh, my God. Yeah. Where can we get it? YouTube. Is it all on YouTube? I think so. I bet it's on the stick as well. Yeah, I'm going to um, What was your favourite episode? I don't really remember them. Can you remember the one with the ice cream van? When there was bodies in the ice cream van? Oh, no. Oh, don't, don't give me any spoilers. So I'm going to rewatch. Good. We decided who was going to be it, and then we all went to hide. It was dusty in the attic, and a few of us got found right away when we started sneezing. I expected that when we might see the kid we had seen earlier... Oh, no. I'll go back. <laughs> this is such bad podcasting. This is all getting cut. I it's expect. Not. Yes, it is. It's not. It's not. Yes, it is. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake. It's all staying in, baby. I expected that we might see the kid we'd seen earlier, but there was never any sign of him. I didn't think much about it. Kids rarely question things that don't come from adults, and as we played, the volume of our game became louder and louder. We began to scream with joy every time someone was found and then some of them had taken to scaring each other instead of just playing hide and seek. I'm sure that some of the people from downstairs could hear us, but given that we were two floors up, they might have mistaken it for just regular noise. 
I was hiding behind a mirror near the back of the attic, peeking out from around <gasps> the edge of the sheet. Like Lynn. Mm -hmm. When I heard a little voice in my ear, it scared the hell out of me. Oh no. It scared me because up until then, I'd been the only person oh, hiding behind the mirror. Oh. You guys shouldn't be here. Oh. You're gonna wake up daddy and he'll be mad. Oh, I mean, the, the use of the word daddy is almost as terrifying as that it's, fucking thing. I turned and there he was. He was crouched down behind the mirror looking at me with these big, sad, scared eyes. And now that I was closer, I could see that he was dressed in suspenders and a grubby looking white undershirt. <laughs> Do Americans call. Is this the Rocky Horror Show? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, sorry, you're talking about <laughs> suspenders on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> This is so on brand for the devil that we went straight I to know. Well, garter and fucking fishnets. <laughs> it's like a child. And, That's but so funny. Why, why, why do they call it? What do you call it? Suspenders here? It is a suspender, yeah. It's a sus yeah, it's not. That's a suspender belt there, suspenders. Uh, <laughs> we call them braces. Braces. Should I call we it call braces. Them bra yeah, because that really freaked me out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can, you know, I, can, I just saw Shania Twain in the, um, what's it called, the video. <laughs> what, you don't impress me much? Um, no, the other one. What was it? Um, oh, my God, there are so many people listening to this now and screaming. What's it called? I don't know. To have a little fun. Fun, fun. Uh, 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 oh, oh, totally, totally crazy. Forget I'm a lady. Big skirts, short skirts. Uh, 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 oh, oh. Really go out, yeah. You and I. It's Man, fun. I feel like a woman. Man. It's <laughs> because age is um, I've Yeah, you know when she's got like the big man shirt on? And like, so uh, I, don't, yeah. I just imagined. What Shania. Is, yeah, what he's supposed to do is like, Shania, so it's like. <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. That don't impress me, man. <laughs> Arguably less scary. When You're gonna wake up, them. Daddy. And we're like, all right, holy hell. Kids, get out of the attic. Shouldn't you be on tour? <laughs> um, have you heard the new Kylie song? Oh my god, I can't get it out of my head. Oh, it's fucking Pardon. great. Pardon. Pardon. Oh yeah, we're so great. we love it so much. The fucking words. <laughs> um, I got a bit. I thought it was like Pan Am. Though at first. Pan Am. Pan Am. Yeah. Padam, like a beating heart. Yeah, it's good. I like it a lot. I didn't. I, the other day we were having a conversation about this. You know, you say you like Kylie, but then you're yeah. like, do I like Kylie? Oh, I think Kylie's amazing. Because a lot of the songs I don't like, like "Can't Get You Out of My Head," shit, hate it. What? Hate it. Um, what's it? What's Sacrilege. the one I really like? Um, the song that she does that sounds a bit like J Lo. Uh, Waiting for tonight. Oh. You will be here in my arms. Show <laughs> oh. that one. I like yeah. that one. Uh, that's that's J-Lo. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's Kylie Minogue. Waiting for tonight. That's Kylie Minogue. Whoa, whoa. See, doesn't it sound like it's on the J-Lo would do? Whoa, whoa. No, yeah, it's Kylie. Gone are the days where the sun oh, well, used to that. set. It's J-Lo. My empty heart. Okay. All the... It's J-Lo. Thank you. Sake. Okay, one of them is Kylie. You're... I'm going to find out what it is. Carry on. Kylie Minogue songs, hang on. <laughs> this is so bad. Um, Carry on with this story, I'm going to find out. No. See it in your eye. No, no, no. Um, oh, I can't fucking... Okay, carry on with your story, I'll find it. Okay. So we've got Shania Twain in an attic. Chicky Wiggy, what's that mean? Um, oh, sorry, sorry. On a night like this. On a night like this. We're just want to be together. together. Be together. Do you on know what I mean? It's similar like vibes, this. isn't it? It's oh, similar yeah, vibes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Kylie. Yeah, I'm not, I am I do. I love her in theory. I think she's great. She's just not to my taste. Okay, fair songs. enough. Well, that's, you know. I find her a bit watery. I it's think not punchy she's... enough for me. <sighs> she's no Shania. Oh, she's better than Shania. I know more songs by Kylie Big than Shania. Claims. Yeah, Kylie's just, she's just cool. She's just got banger after banger and she's always been quite consistent. She's like the queen. Mm. 
Okay. Queen of Pop. Okay. Anyway, this is just boring, this is it? for another type of yeah. podcast, isn't it? Um, let's go back in. It scared me because up until then, I'd been the only person hiding behind the mirror. You guys shouldn't be here. You're going to wake up, Daddy, and he'll be mad. I turned and there he was. He was crouched down behind the mirror looking at me with these big, sad, scared eyes. And now that I was closer, I could see that he was dressed in braces and a grubby looking white undershirt. His feet were bare and his hair looked like somebody had cut it with a bowl. I asked him who he was, but he shook his head and put a finger to his lips as he made a shushing sound. Shh, you're gonna wake daddy up and he's gonna be mad. I started to ask him who he was talking about when all of a sudden we heard loud footsteps coming up the ladder. Somebody was yelling, but it wasn't regular le- lelling. <laughs> Yelling. Regular yelling. Regular yelling. Usually when my dad yelled, there were swear words in it or some kind of direction. This yelling was just incoherent, babbling like an angry beehive or the car when it needs an oil change. It was angry, it was loud, but there wasn't really any substance to it. The game quieted down and as we all became and we all became the hiders. We knew that we shouldn't be here. We all knew that if we were found, we'd be in trouble. So we all took to hiding as someone came very angrily up the ladder to the attic. I could see the others as they hunkered around the other covered pieces of furniture and storage boxes. They all looked scared, but they also looked excited. This was a different level to the game. This was something a little scarier. We all knew that this was the real game and we had to win. We might never be allowed to come to one of these again. Through the white oiling up out of the square hole, no idea what that means, came a large something. It was a man-shaped, Fucking hell. It was man-shaped, but maybe not a person. It had arms and legs. I could see a head, but the rest of it seemed to be just shadows. It was like someone standing in total darkness. And I think even then I suspected this was no museum curator coming after noisy children. The hairs on the back of my neck began to stand up. And as the thing started looking for us, I turned and found the little boy was gone. The other kids seemed to have felt to have felt it too and as the thing moved towards the left side of the attic we all started shuffling to the right it knocked over a box and kept yelling in that strange barely coherent way it did not seem unfamiliar with the attic and I wondered if it was us that it was looking for or if it was the little boy who'd been a stranger to me either way we made our way back down the ladder and started quietly going down to the second floor We were almost all down when the thing turned and looked at the two or three of us that were left. He didn't have eyes, at least none that I could see, but I felt very seen by it and the last of us went down in a herky-jerky pile of bodies. We ran back down the staircase and that's when someone else found us. We burst through the door that led out onto the stairwell and almost knocked over a lady with a tour guide name badge. She blinked at us and did not seem at all happy to see seven or eight kids coming out of a restricted area. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I mean, you know. She asked what we thought we were doing in there, and we told her we thought it was open. She said no, the door was always locked, and told us we'd better get out of there before we got in trouble. When she asked how many of us were there, that's when we seemed to disagree. Some of us said there were seven, but a few of us insisted there were eight. No, there was only seven of us. Remember, that's why we didn't play capture the flag. Yeah, but that other kid joined us, so we had eight. What other kid? There was only seven of us. The kid, in braces, he was playing in the attic with us. No. At that point, the lady was completely frazzled. She collected up all of us and brought us downstairs to have a talk with our parents. In the meantime, she had a few other people search the second floor and the attic for a missing kid. Most of our parents were not terribly pleased about being drug away from the festivities because their kids couldn't behave, and we got an earful as soon as we stood in the foyer of the Martin house. Some of us, me included, were more worried about the missing kid than getting in trouble. I can't speak for everyone, but I had seen how scared he was. I don't know who he was afraid of, but I was afraid that whatever that thing was up there, it had got him. As my dad let me have it for acting out, my eyes started to wander. I was looking at the pictures on the wall, the ones showing the Martin house through the years, before they settled on a very familiar face. The kid looked less scared and more confused, but it was definitely him, standing on the front lawn with two other kids and his parents. The house behind him looked like a the house behind him looked a little different, but it was definitely the one we were standing in right now. Uh, that's him! 
I said, interrupted my dad in the middle of his lecture. Who's him? My dad asked, not appreciating being interrupted. The kid, the one I saw in the attic. The lady who'd found us looked over at the picture before shaking her head and telling me not to tell lies. No, really, that's him. He was hiding with us and he told me that we were going to wake his daddy up. He looked really scared. My parents didn't believe me, but I've seen that picture since and I know now that little boy is one of the Martins' brood. He was one of the kids who was allegedly hung from the tree in the front yard and I would have bet you anything that what I had seen was his spirit. The big shadowy thing didn't look at all like Mr. Martin, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. The kid didn't have black eyes like all the other stories either, but maybe that's something that comes a little later. Mm -hmm. I've encountered a lot of strange things in my life, but that was one of my earliest scrapes with the paranormal. As of writing this, the Martin house still sits in the same spot. They have completely closed off the inside these days, and after that year, the hospital started doing their employee appreciation somewhere else. I don't know if it was the house itself or because they got a better deal somewhere else, but I never went back to the Martin house again. Wow, very scary. <laughs> Very spooky. That is, yeah. Creepy kids, man. Creepy Sitting kids. Sitting behind a mirror and then it just looks up at you. Creepy fucking kids. Um. Do you want a spooky story from me? I would love one, please. I'm going to hold this to myself. Okay. The Himalayan you're not, rock you're salt. Not, you're not going to hold your slime? Do you know what? I'm going to... Hard no. Yeah, the slime can go. I'm, I want the Himalayan rock salt firmly in my oh. palm. I okay. feel safer with it. Okay. Ready? <sighs> yes. I lived in an old apartment in 2002. The place was built in 1900, so it was just over 100 years old when I moved in. The living room and kitchen were fine, but the bathroom and bedroom were unnerving. Like, I just always felt like I was being watched. Especially in the bedroom if the closet door was open. Oh, God. What's it about creeps in the closet? I know, it's weird, isn't it? Those unnerving feelings just became moderately uncomfortable as I settled in. I felt safe in the bedroom, but only if the door was locked. One night, I was dead asleep when there was a loud bang. Ah! Fuck you. On the bedroom door. That scared me. When I got up the courage to get out of bed, I checked the apartment and all the windows were closed and locked from the inside. The door still had the chain secured. No one was in there. I mentioned the closet in the bedroom. I never liked going in there and I never liked it if the door was open. For some reason, I would hear gasping noises. <laughs> That's horrible. So for that reason, the closet stayed closed. A month or more after I was woken to the bang on my door, <laughs> I was dead asleep. <laughs> You're such a little shit. But something woke me up, and it was a pressure on me, like being held down. It was pitch black in my room. I couldn't see anything. But I just knew that someone was standing over me. When I could finally turn on a bedside lamp, no one was there. After that, I couldn't sleep in the dark. I had to sleep with the lamp on. Fair enough. That incident scared the life out of me. And after that, the unnerving feeling of being watched intensified. Friends would come over and comment about being uncomfortable in the bathroom, like being watched. It became so uncomfortable for me. When I had the chance to move to another unit, I jumped at the chance and I just got out. After me, several people rented the apartment and they would move out within months. I became friendly with the building manager and I told him that I felt the place was haunted, but he kind of just laughed it off. Years after they were renovating the place, the building manager was doing some painting in there. The building owner was in there as well. Doing some what in there? What, did I not say anything? Painting. Oh, you, know, you said it so fast that my brain... Sorry. Ran. Years after they were renovating the place, building manager was doing some painting in there. The mm. building owner was there too. I went and checked out the apartment and it looked a lot nicer. It didn't feel as creepy, somehow. I got to talking with the building Nothing owner. Nothing like a good lick of paint. Nothing like a good lick of paint. Come on. I got to talk to him in the building. It's a glow up, isn't it? It's a glow up. 60 second makeover. Yeah, if you exactly. Let's get some, let's get some shitty motivational what, signs on the wall. Don't you think that we've said this before? Like, 
why is it that ghosts don't appear in a well interior decorated apartment? Do you know what I mean? Why like, do they what? They only they only seem to appear where the drapes are velvet and the light is low. Why is this a porn film? <laughs> and everyone's <laughs> naked. <laughs> and people are falling through our souls actually. But you know what I mean? There. Like like all this Victorian setting stuff. Um, I, I want a ghost in like a, you know, an Airbnb. I don't know. My my mum and dad's house has been fairly done up, and you yeah. still got that ghost. We still got that ghost that I bumped into That's the other true. day. That's true. So, you know, it's jarring think, when it's in I a think, modern setting, you isn't know it? What? I think a lot of people say it because it adds to the story, doesn't it? Like no Atmosphere. one's really that interested when you're on a council estate. Not I think that's spookier, like though. I'd rather hear the stories about, like, the most mundane setting. Yeah, it's like when stuff happens in the day. Yeah, That's exactly. creepier. Exactly. Because it means that you're never safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I went and checked out the apartment, and it looked a lot nicer. It didn't feel as creepy somehow. I got to talking with the, biz- uh, the building owner, and <laughs> through the course of conversation, he just throws it out there that a former tenant committed suicide in the closet by hanging themselves. Do you remember that? Lovely. Thank you for that, Foley. Really enjoyed that. He also mentioned that the original designer of the building lived in that apartment and died in there. I wasn't mad when I heard that, but felt validated that what I experienced was real. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I think it was Richard who said to us, you have to... um, when you're selling a house, you have to say whether it's haunted or not. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Because, Do you call BS? Well, was, there's no, like, you have to... It's a bit subjective, you isn't You have it? to say if someone died in the house. Okay. Because, yeah, exactly, it's subjective. Because somebody did actually, you know, if there was a murder or something like that. Yeah, you're right. If, it's like if, a if you're trying house. to get Fred and West, Fred and Rose West, <laughs> Fred and West, <laughs> Fred and Rose West house on right move, you're going to have some explaining. Didn't they knock I mean? it down? The, I, I think, think there is like just a hole in it now. There's a in hole the hole where, in the street. Yeah. You wouldn't even want to live next door, though, would you? I know. Or anywhere fucking near or it. Or anywhere fucking near it. But you just never know. Like, I think I can't remember, but I remember someone saying that like they were they were taking up all the carpet and they saw like blood stains. Oh and, my god! And you're like, I'd quite like that. I yeah, a, like a macabre part of you would be like, I wonder what happened. Yeah, here. I but say like, that now, but like when I'm your trying to get to sleep, at night yeah. would be like, well, well, yeah, I think you're right. Like maybe disclosing it is better. And yeah, but that's murder and like that's stuff that actually happens. I don't know if ghosts are something you could. Also, what are they going to do if you don't? Do you know and what I mean? also, you could go to like Foxton's and be like, oh, by the way, um. There's a kid in the closet that looks at me at night, and they'd be like, yeah, sure. You mad bastard. I'm not going to fucking later. tell anyone that because yeah. I want to sell your house. Also, if somebody was then like, oh, you didn't tell me about the ghost. Yeah, you'd be the, like, what ghost? Uh, what, are you going to take me to fucking court? Yeah, well, first time for everything. So anyway, I mean, it's probably a nice thing to say. It's probably a nice thing to do if you're that kind of person, but I'm not, so I wouldn't. So that's that, isn't it? Would you like another story? Yes, please. <laughs> This is my account of the only real scary occurrence in my life. It was mid-October 1992. I was riding home on my motorcycle. Now we know how some of these stories start. Uh, Go to Care Philly. Rabina. No. Philly. Uh, I was riding home on my motorcycle from seeing... If you don't know what that callback is, you've got to go back. Yeah, that was the time when you just basically redid the story that I did. Yeah, both of our dads gave us creepy... The same creepy story, weird. Uh, riding home on my motorcycle from seeing some friends. It was late in the evening or early hours of that chilly fall weekend. Fall, because the leaves fall. fall from the trees in central California. I'd made my turn off of the county freeway onto a less than well-lit county road. I remember that the road ahead was deserted. No headlights coming towards me, nor any taillights in my rear view mirrors. The road was encompassed with large walnut groves on each side. The huge trees and land swallowed the distance ahead in complete darkness. I was clipping along at about 50 miles per hour when my eyes caught the jogger up ahead on my right side. My mind quickly thought, "Mm, how odd, wondering why someone would be out here jogging at this time of the year at this hour of night. As I approached him, I gradually moved to the middle of the road to give the jogger space. I touched on my brights so he'd see me approaching. Now, (laughs) Brights. (laughs) 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 
Why is that funny? Because it's like, because it's bright. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a bright. <laughs> Um, now, now, understand this. At first, in my mind, there was nothing out of the ordinary other than the timing of the situation. A hooded runner, heather grey sweats, a figure about six foot tall jogging along the shoulder of a deserted county road at midnight in October. Mm. As I approached him at a safe distance of maybe 100 feet away, bright headlight blazing, I saw him, or should I say it, stumble. I fully expected the figure to fall. I love a fall. Oh. I love someone falling over. It's one of the funniest things <laughs> that will ever happen. It is. It immediately makes them relatable, doesn't it? I look like a dickhead, though, because I have to walk off really quickly and other people are there helping out because I'm just laughing too much. I can't. <laughs> I can't stop and help. I if can't. I fall over, I immediately start welling up. What? Like a child. Oh, yeah, you said this. Yeah, I just go... <laughs> oh, like and really... then I freeze. Is it out of embarrassment? Cry. Embarrass, yeah, it's humiliation. Is it? Yeah, I get really like, oh my god, I fell over in the street, and then it oh, hurts. That's and I, when sad. I when I hurt, I want to cry. I'm a child. What a massive pussy. Anyway, can yeah. I? Oh, I really am. I'll be like, <laughs> oh. and I'm like, I just need to fucking grow up. Um, yeah, you do. Um, okay. I fully expected the figure to fall, sprawling face down into the ploughed dirt but it didn't. It did fall to the ground, but onto all fours. But very quickly, and with amazing agility, it began running, like an animal on all fours, like a wild animal. Mind you, I was riding at a regular speed at this point, maybe 55 miles per hour, but the hooded human form that I'd watched become a hooded animal was keeping pace with me. Then, as if it sensed that I'd been discovered, then, as if it had sensed that it had been discovered, it sped off to its right into the pitch black walnut grove, and my blood ran cold. I downshifted out of instinct and throttled hard. I was gone. All I could think of that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> All I could think of at that split second was that thing, that animal, might suddenly pop up in my rearview mirror with some horrific, maniacal, grimmest face right before ending me. Before I knew it, I was five miles down the road and my speedometer read 100 miles per hour. Just before I made my final right turn towards home, I brought my courage up to look in the rear view. Nothing. Just pitch black behind oh, me. Oh, no. Whatever it was, it was gone. Shakingly, I made my last turn and didn't look back again until I pulled into my garage and closed the door. To this day, now 31 years later, I can tell that true story and my listeners will react with complete disbelief. Some believe me, others don't. What was it? A person? An animal? A shapeshifter? A skinwalker? Or a combination of all of those? You decide. What's a skinwalker? Well, a skinwalker is... She gets on Google and she looks it up. I've heard I've heard this being referenced quite a bit. Um, a skinwalker in Navajo culture, a skinwalker is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn in or possess or disguise themselves as an animal. Oh, I see. So, like a shapeshiftery type thing, right? What do you think that was? Man, I feel like a ghost. <laughs> I think it was... I think it was person. Jogging and then... How do you explain the, the running like an animal on all fours in, in, in your juicy couture? Um, mental. <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of like podcasting with uh, someone who's just not quite there. So was that person who was on all fours? Um, no, I don't know. I think it was. I think it was a very severe, severe disability, <laughs> mental. Does it mental? Mental. Issue. Now, does it exp How can you keep up fifty miles an hour running? Oh yeah, that is actually a really good point. Running alongside. Okay, the then bike. I think it was. I think it was a, the devil. I think it was a the devil. Oh. What? Just didn't even think about that. Yeah. That's weird. That keeps cropping up, isn't it? It does keep cropping up. Um, Who knows? But episode name, though. Man, I feel like a ghost. Done. <laughs> Four years ago, I lived in a very large farmhouse. It was converted into two apartments. The house was known as the old boy's home. 
It was used to house boys with behavioural issues, but was closed due to allegations. Anyway, I was living with my boyfriend and three-year-old daughter at the time. My bedroom had a large fireplace that had been boarded up and painted over. I decided to pu uh, push my bed up against it one day while I was rearranging things. It was like a headboard. That night, around 1am, I heard a small voice saying, Mom? Mom? Mommy? No, no, no. <laughs> I had sat up in bed but didn't see anything, so I reached over my boyfriend trying to grab down to my... Mm -hmm. Trying to grab down... I'm um, trying to reach down to grab my daughter and put her in our bed. I kept feeling around and I was still hearing the voice, but I couldn't feel her. My boyfriend woke up and turned the bedside lamp on asking me, what the hell are you doing? I explained that Amelia, my sister's name, was trying to get in our bed and I was reaching for her. There was nobody there. My daughter was sound asleep in her room. Then the next night came. Around 1am again, my dog had started to whimper at the door, so my boyfriend got up to take him outside. You know that feeling in a bed when someone lies down next to you, where the bed pushes in and there's a warmth at your back? I felt that. So I assumed my boyfriend... <laughs> so I assumed my boyfriend had come back to bed. I rolled over, my boyfriend wasn't in the bed, and I felt the fucking bed release pressure. Whatever was lying next to me had gotten up in that second. I moved my bed the next day to the other side of the room and I never had another instant in, in the two years I remained in that house. Freaky! Oh. Isn't that scary? Oh. Just a little voice going, Mom. Mom. Oh, I don't like I know, and then you're like, oh, it's my daughter, and then like, she's in her bed in her room. Oh, oh my God, man. I love it. I was lying in bed by myself nodding off to sleep, when I rolled over and saw someone standing in the corner of my room. Oh my God. He didn't even bother trying to hide himself. He just stood there, staring at me. It was too dark to make out a face, but I know the figure of a man holding a knife when I see one. <sighs> I was too scared to scream, so I just lay there in my bed, accepting my fate. He walked over his boots on my carpet, breaking the already horrifying silence, and leant down to smell my hair. What? A fucking nutcase. And caress my face. Oh. Uh. After a minute or two of it, he walked out of my room. I waited half an hour to get up because I was too scared to even bat an eyelash. I called the cops, filed a report, and the man didn't show up again. I had so many questions. Was this just a random thing? Did I have a stalker? Am I a murder or sexual abuse target? I oh. went to the police station again the next week in hopes of finding out more, thinking of the atrocities that could be my fate. An officer saw me crying and came over to hug me and console me. As he held me and let me cry into his shoulder, he softly whispered into my ear, you smell different when you're awake. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Get away! I'm actually, yeah, goosebumps. Yeah, it's because it's hot and I'm sweating. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I'm not moisturised. That's fucking grim, That's isn't disgusting. it? disgusting. Okay, Hannah. Yeah? I'm going to do a little creep of the week. Okay. Um, this is from Nathaniel. And it's a little one and it reminded me of the story uh, or the stories we've just had about people in people in your bedroom. Yeah, I absolutely fucking hate that. Um, and it's a little short story, so thank you for sending it in, Nathaniel. Okay, um, here's what he has to say. Hey, I have a short story that happened to me when I was like four and I'm 16 now. Oh, one of my long, young, longest, youngest listeners, maybe. Oh, that's, I love that. How old is he? 16. Hi, Nathaniel. Sorry about all You're the You're Thanks for writing in. Uh, why did I go? Nothing. Thanks for writing. Thanks for writing in. Nathaniel. Welcome to BBC Yorkshire. Thank you for writing in. That's very nice. Thank you. Uh, why do you go all like witchy? We're not witches. Yes, we are. No, not in York, not up the north. Up the north. <laughs> take me. <laughs> up, up north. Buy me dinner and take me up the north. Yeah, fucking bunch of witches up north. Mm. Burn them. Um, I'm now 16. So around that time when I was four, I lived with my dad and nana and granddad. So while my nana and granddad are out, me and my dad are sat in our room on the floor facing towards the door into the passage to where there's a wall and stairs on the right and a bathroom on the left. So my dad gets up 
and goes to the bathroom, and I'm sat on my own. And out of nowhere, a cloaked figure is floating down the passage to my nana and granddad's room, and I just remember freezing. It couldn't have been my dad, as I would have seen him come out of the bathroom. So years later, I asked my nana, do we have some sort of hooded cloaked thing in our house? To which she said, no. So then about a year ago, that cloaked hooded figure came up on Facebook as I was scrolling through oh. and to see that people have seen that before. But suddenly I think of a time when I was living with my mum and maybe two years before, to see a man staring in our window while me and my mama hid under a blanket. Maybe it could be linked. Or maybe that's just me overthinking. That is so creepy. I, I think you've seen a lot of scary shit, Nathaniel. <laughs> That's that's not. Terrifying. It's just one. I love these. Like, have you have you seen the, the hooded cloak? Have you seen that or hooded uh, uh, man with a sickle? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know that one that's coming for me late at night. Yeah. Like, no. Anybody know what? Has anyone else been visited by death? I think you've been visited twice, mate. And that's uh, that's, that's very scary. You need to get some Himalayan rock salt or parsley. Um, but or coriander. Coriander's coriander. Cori- coriander's fine. <laughs> Coricanta. Coricanta. Um, <laughs> Susie, 16. Come on. Stop being a twat. Um, thanks for writing in. Um, Thank you, Nathaniel. Welcome to the section, We Get Haunted. So you don't have to. So, Hannah, um, this week, uh, in 2016, Sweden... Sweden's tourist mean? board opened up a phone line for a month oh. and they said anyone around the world can call this number right. and it will connect to anyone in Sweden. Right. Maybe not anyone, maybe if you signed up to the thing. Right. And you could ask a Swedish person anything. And that got me thinking. Imagine you just called a random number and you asked them if they have a ghost story. So... This week, I want you to call... This is so similar to me. Really? Yeah, it's really similar. But it's fine, we'll do it again. Okay. Later. Um, I want you to call a random number. Yeah. And I'm going to... I'm going to, like, pop in the numbers. You can't, you can't pick someone you know. Okay. And... This is really scary. And then you just... If it connects through to someone, just say, Hi, I'm doing a podcast about the paranormal... Do you have a scary story? Oh, my God. What a great idea this is. It's better than mine. So. Oh, seven. Yeah, it kind of has to be. Hang on. Are you going like, to put your mum's number in or uh, something? Right. I, watch. I'm not, I'm not thinking about okay. it. Okay. You, you there's only 11 digits. You know that, don't you? Okay. I'm scared. Don't read. Obviously, don't read the number out. Oh, yeah. Put it up to the thing. Oh! And dial. And if it doesn't go through, you're leaving a voicemail. Go for it. Oh, my God. Can I not 141 it before I nope. turn off my number as well? No. I literally just bashed in any old number. phone you've called is switched off. Please try again later. Oh, can't leave a message. Okay, let's try again. No, that's it. I get one go. What? Yeah, one go. Thanks so much. <laughs> no, go on, you can try again. One more. That was a fun idea. I'm scared that people are going to tell me to fuck off. We might do. We get three goes. Okay. What so if someone says they don't want us to put it on the podcast? Oh my god. <laughs> Another random number bashed in. Okay, go for it. It could be absolute gold or absolutely the worst idea I've ever had. I can't believe we both turned up with the same game. I want this to connect. So. You've dialed an incorrect number. Please check the number and try. Fuck's sake. Okay. One more time. Third, third go and then we'll end the episode. That's a great idea, though. Really fun. It's not really contacting the dead, but okay. I've got my fingers crossed. Please connect. It's 
not communication to me. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't exist. Well, listen, great idea. Should I try one more? Ah, uh, go on. I can't wait for us to do the same thing on the next episode with your phone. <laughs> it just goes through immediately. Please go through. This is not good podcasting. Do you know what else? Signal's not very good in here. Because we're downstairs. Have you got signal bars? Like one. Yeah, me too. Okay, well, we'll try again next week, see what happens. Well, <laughs> well we that tried. was very excellent. Do you know what? I feel alive. Oh, we've been ghost hunting. We've been ghost hunting. Thank you so much for listening. So um, much for listening. And God for listening to us. If you've got a phone number you want, no, 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 we can't, we can't call you. We could call you. We could If you call want us you. to call you and you want to listen, speak live on the poddy, um, no, let's not invite um, the devil into our lives. Uh, bye, guys. See you next week. Amen. Bye.